Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get some rubber latex going on. Uh, I already have my object loaded in the shading tab. I've got a principled shader applied to it and I'm going to enable viewport shading and I have them using the cycles render engine. First thing, let's change that base color to something more appropriate. 0 0.01, let's say 0 0.005. We're almost at black, but we're not quite there. Uh, now, specular, we're going to keep at 0.5, but oh no, we're going to keep the specular tint there as well. Everything else we're going to drop. Okay, first thing we need is a noise texture. So shift A, noise texture. Plug that into the roughness, not the base color. Add a mapping node and a texture coordinate, either by pressing Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, or just search for them in the usual way by pressing shift A. Add a color ramp in between the noise texture and the roughness. And we're going to move the black value to 0.25. And we're going to change the white value to a grayish color. So let's say 0.15. Five, maybe a bit lighter, 0.2. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, now, we need a second color ramp. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. And we're going to bring the black value to 0.5 position, not 0.45. Why did my figures type that? And let's say 0.5. 7.5 for the gray, uh, changing the interpolation mode to ease and changing the interpolation mode on the first one to be spline. Uh, now we need to mix those together. So we need a mix RGB shader. Plug the second color ramp into color two. Take the factor from the noise texture again into the second color ramp. And we're going to change this to add. Hmm, actually, I think what I'm going to do is use a math node instead. Plug that into the roughness and the colors into the two slots. So what I was aiming for was basically this, and it's sort of a smearing effect, like the latex has been handled. Hmm. You can read that any way you like. Mm, now, for the scale on the noise texture, change that to 2. Detail to 15. And the other two will leave the same. And believe it or not, that kind of concludes our rubber latex tutorial. So I'm going to send that to render. I am going to use the denoising option. And we'll see what we get. I'm just bringing that to a stop because I have forgotten one thing. I need to add a little bit of bump because rubber latex wouldn't be completely smooth because it tends to conform to whatever it's on. So we're going to add a bump node. Oops. And then we're going to take the value from the add math node, plug that into the height and that's way too much. So, on the bump node, change the strength to 0 0.015 and the distance to 0 0.5. It probably doesn't seem like much, but 
the um, what's the thing? What's the saying? Devil is in the detail. Is that the one? I don't know. Anyway, let's send that to render. Okay, and there we go. There wasn't much difference after about 700 samples. I am just going to check one thing. Okay. Just getting a lot of artifacting. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and we'll give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content and in the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.